The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and the waves are softly splashing up onto the shoreline. Everything is so beautiful. What a truly amazing world we live in. Why wouldn't everyone choose to have their game look like this? Oh, right. Performance issues are one of the biggest variables to determine if a game is enjoyable for the player base or not. No matter how amazing the game looks, or how creative the content is, if you can't run it, you can't play it. Today I'm going to go through what it takes to make the game run as best it can, while keeping the best graphics to make your game look as beautiful and as balanced as possible. Before we get started, I would like to make a very important clarification. The term lag is often used in different forms by different people, and sometimes even in different circumstances. There are two common occurrences that are referred to as lag. The first one is a low frame rate, measured in frames per second. This occurs when the graphics load of the game you are playing is too much for your computer to handle, making the game look very choppy and inconsistent. This problem is entirely within the game and your computer's hardware, making it a very solvable problem. We'll discuss more on that in a minute. The second is high latency, otherwise known as high ping. This occurs because the input from your computer takes time to transfer to the server. For example, on your screen, you might see your gun shoot when your sights are on an enemy, but by the time the server detects you shoot, the person would have already moved. This problem does not reside from your computer, but rather the network it's connected to. The only fixes are to locate a stronger, faster internet connection, or to join a server with lower ping. You can sort servers by latency by clicking on ping in the server browser. Now that we sorted out what problem we're looking to fix, before we even open the game, there are a couple things we can do to help our machine out. I would recommend checking your PC for updates, as that one Windows update from three months ago you've been putting off can hinder performance. It might also be beneficial to clean up your hard drives, or to transfer unturned onto a solid state drive. But these are all things you can do when you have more time. For now, I strongly recommend shutting down your computer for a few minutes, and giving it a reboot. This is especially important for gaming laptops. Sometimes all your PC needs is just a little breather. Speaking of laptops, if you intend to be playing on one, you have another thing to keep in mind. The greatest benefit of a laptop over a desktop computer is its small package, which makes for great portability. However, that same benefit also makes it highly susceptible to overheating. When testing my game, I was able to get 90 frames per second on full graphics for about 5 minutes. After that, it dropped down to 60 frames, and then 35, and then 17, and then it crashed. NVIDIA states that graphics cards must be kept at a temperature below 95 degrees Celsius, at an absolute maximum, and doesn't recommend going anything above 80 degrees. You can keep tabs on your GPU's temperature by going into the Task Manager, if your graphics card has an internal thermometer. Otherwise, keep an eye on how fast the fans are spinning and how hot it feels to your touch. As your temperature rises, your graphics card slows down, and your performance tanks. If you intend to play on a laptop, it's very important that you find a graphics level that runs sustainably so that you can play for hours without it overheating. Alright, now let's take a look at the game itself. If you haven't already, I recommend turning on the Show Frames Per Second slash Ping setting in Options. This will help you accurately determine how much performance you're getting with your settings. If you've struggled with performance issues before, you might have heard the same suggestion hundreds of times just lower your graphics. If you have, you're not alone. But that answer wasn't good enough for me. Sure, you could just turn absolutely everything to a minimum and it'll run great. But that's not really what we want to do here, is it? No, we want the best graphics possible, providing the game still runs at an acceptable level. So I took the liberty of testing which graphics settings impact you the most, and the results may surprise you. I know they surprised me. So let's get started. Up at the top here, these settings are the heavy hitters. These ones will give you the most frame rate of anything else, and by a lot. However, these also might be the ones you're most reluctant to change. 
especially considering your play style. Let's take a closer look. The one leading the pack by a long shot is resolution. Resolution is the quantity and ratio of pixels on your screen. Your native resolution is the physical amount of pixels you have on your screen. If you have a more rectangular screen, you likely have a 16 by 9 ratio, and you'll use these resolutions. If you have a more square screen, you likely have a 4 by 3 resolution, and you'll use these resolutions. The biggest number you see here is most likely your native resolution, and it's what your PC runs at with almost everything, unless specifically changed otherwise. For the sake of this video, just know that the lower you go in resolution, frames will dramatically increase, but your game will get slightly more blurry. It's similar to turning down a YouTube video's quality, so that you don't have that irritating buffering every 5 seconds. Just a note, if you do change your resolution, I recommend changing your user interface scale to match it, so that you can actually view your inventory. Next, we have scope quality. If you have this setting turned on, anytime your player is holding a scope, the scene has to be drawn twice, effectively halving your performance. When idly holding it, a small second scene is drawn on the scope. When zoomed in, the second scene is now the larger focused one, and the first makes your surroundings still visible. Whether you change this setting or not depends almost entirely on your playstyle. With single player, or friendly servers, you can afford to turn this setting off, only rendering in one scene at a time. However, with hostile servers, or especially in PvP or arena servers, this setting is crucial to have, as it can alert you of other players' presence without having to unzoom to check it. With this setting, despite it having five different options, it's only worthwhile to have it on Off or Ultra. You should have the advantage of seeing better with a scope, not worse. Additionally, the night vision scope seems to take even more performance, dividing your current frames by almost three. I suspect it's likely to do with the way it's rendered, perhaps rendering the scope view once, and then again with the night vision effect. Just be prepared for the performance drop if you happen to find one. Lastly, for the most important settings, we have the render mode. Now, this one is a bit of a wild card, because it acts different on every machine. It has the potential to raise your game up to an additional 20 frames per second, but it simply might not do anything at all. Just know this setting has almost no impact on graphics, so whichever mode runs better on your PC, it's just a free performance enhancement. Moving on to the remaining graphics settings, I have these organized in order of most to least effect. For the remainder of these, I have the performance gain as listed from the lowest setting to the highest. These performance gains are all extremely linear, so if you choose another option besides the lowest or the highest, expect performance gains according to the setting. Choosing low instead of off, for example, will grant three quarters of the expected performance gain, while medium will give half, and so on. Additionally, these benefits compound off of one another. I tested these settings overlooking Stratford, changing only one setting at a time, while the rest of them were all at maximum. This can conclude that the stated values will give at minimum that amount, but if you already had lower settings, it will likely give even more. For example, turning off ambient occlusion when at maximum settings only gave me an extra 5 frames, but when I had already turned down some of the other things, it gave me 16. Expect similar results with these settings. Most of these settings are fairly self-explanatory, so I won't go over each one. If you wish to know or be given a definition of the specific setting, feel free to hover over the setting and the game will briefly describe what it does. Be aware that some settings will affect performance more in specific situations. For example, if you're looking at just a field and nothing else, having a high grass setting will lower performance more than usual, since grass is all the game is rendering at the time. Similarly, staring at the sun with bloom and ultra sun rays 
will lower the performance with those specific settings more than if you were just walking around. In general, I would recommend having about 40 more frames than your screen's refresh rate, which is usually 60, and especially so if you have scope settings on. Anything in gray has, from as far as I can tell, no effect on performance at all. Feel free to put them all on maximum settings and reap the slight graphics upgrade in your game for no cost. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference it can make. Just some extra tips for your performance. Night vision goggles don't impact performance. Neither does the full screen mode that you choose. If you want to start up your game faster, Go into the workshop and unsubscribe from any curated or workshop maps you have. This will prevent it from loading at the start of the game. If you do decide you want to play them after it's loaded, just go back and check them again. As of February 18th, 2023, performance on all vanilla maps improved, so you will, by default, receive extra frames on any official maps. Oh, and your field of vision doesn't affect performance either. I hope you learned something from all this information. I know I sure did. I used to play my game at minimum settings, when in reality, I only had to change a few of the heavier ones, and I can play my game at a much more beautiful scene than I could before. I wish you the best of luck in your performance journey, and I hope that you're able to create a much better running unturned game than you had previously. Or, just had fun analyzing it with me.